Hi friends, I'm Nicholas Acciani. Let's talk backstage. <laughs> In theater, we use a lot of curtains and drapery and fabric to help frame out our stages and create our sets. Those are what we call soft goods. The term soft goods refers to any cloth-based material that is a part of the stage or scenery. This does not include costumes or small hand props since those are not actually a part of the stage or scenery itself. A couple examples on the set include curtains on the windows, curtains over doorways, which may be decorative or can be simply masking. Masking being a soft good or a hard flat that blocks off or hides a part of backstage. We're not actually talking about the hard flat parts. We're talking about the soft good parts this time. Basically any curtain keeping the audience from seeing all of the crazy shenanigans we get into backstage or any equipment that they are not supposed to see. Speaking of the stage, the soft goods that are specifically a part of the stage all have their own names and functions. They can be dead hung, which means they are not movable, or they can be rigged as a part of a fly or tracking system, meaning that they are not stationary and move up and down side to side or are peeled up to reveal or hide the stage. Let's start at the front of the stage with the grand drape or main curtain, sometimes called simply the main. This is a rig curtain that is the furthest curtain downstage. Usually it's a bright or rich color and a lot of times it's decorative as well. It's also sometimes called the act curtain as it usually comes in at the end of each act saying it's intermission time. Along the top of the main, we have the teaser or house header. This is usually the same type of fabric or the same color as the main. It's dead hung from the grid and it runs across the top of the proscenium, the full width of the stage, creating a frame with either the main or with the tormentors. The tormentor, which sounds like a dementor in Harry Potter, even though we're not speaking of that these days. The tormentor is another dead hung curtain just behind the grand drape going from floor to the ceiling, framing out the sides of the stage. Sometimes the main doesn't fly all of the way out of the space, but instead stays part of the way in, in which case it might double as the house header or travel stage right to stage left, then it may also double as a tormentor when it's in its open position. So at various positions along the stage, we have borders or headers, which just like the house header are dead hung from the grid and usually run the full width of the stage horizontally all the way across. They can also be hung from battens and raised up and down. These help with our framing of the stage, creating that top part of the frame, and they help mask legs and electrical equipment up in the grid. So at the end of each border, running from the stage to the grid, up and down, framing up the sides of the stage are our legs. These are tall, narrow drapes that frame the onstage acting space and create our wings. Also in the wings are tabs, which are very similar to legs, except they run perpendicular to the rest of the drapery. So instead of running stage right to stage left, they run upstage to downstage, which is also where they get their other name, up and downers. Get it? Upstage, downstage, up and downers? Yeah, you get it. Legs, tabs, tabs and borders are all forms of masking, hiding the backstage from the audience, as well as framing the stage to create a nice picture. Earlier, I mentioned that the grand drape sometimes travels. That is another type of curtain, a traveler. A traveler is a curtain that opens and closes horizontally, typically used to cut off the stage. So we'll have a mid traveler or an upstage traveler. In its open position, it can become a leg, but in its closed position, it cuts off the stage so we can maybe set up a new scene behind the traveler while a scene is happening in front of it. Then we have another type of drape called a scrim, which is also sometimes called gauze. This is an open weave fabric that looks opaque to the audience when lit from the front and transparent when lit from behind. Usually it needs to be stretched taut to work. And one of the great things is that it can be painted. So you can paint it to look like a picture, have someone hiding behind it and light it behind and surprise, they're there. I've used this in a lot of shows, painted and not painted. And it's actually one of my favorite theatrical effects because it's so simple and so effective. Then we have a backdrop, which is a curtain that indicate scenery. Usually they're painted, though these days many are printed, and sometimes projections are used to create a digital moving backdrop. It's not my favorite use of projections, but that's a whole other sidebar. Then we have the cyclorama, usually called by its short nickname, the psych. This is a white or natural or neutral colored cloth, usually at the back of the stage, that can be lit to represent the sky or other backgrounds, or it can be projected onto for digital backgrounds. In theater, we use these fabrics a lot, and they are usually very close to very hot lights. So all of them need to to be fire resistant, not necessarily fireproof because it is fabric, so you can't actually make it necessarily fireproof, but fire resistant. Now, some of these fabrics that we use are naturally fire resistant, but if they're not, they needed to be treated with chemicals, usually called a retardant, to make them fire resistant so that we can use them safely in the theater. But still, accidents happen. So many theaters have a fire curtain, which is a specific curtain that is fire resistant, used to drop between the stage and the audience, and sometimes upstage between the stage and the rest of the theater to keep any 
any fire that happens on stage contained. I may or may not have had that happen to me in the middle of a show in college, and we had to cancel the second act of the show. So that's the basic rundown of the soft goods in theater. Notice that I said usually when I talked about the placement and color for all of the soft goods, that's because many theaters and many productions may move their soft goods around based on what that specific production needs. So these are just the standards that we usually see. And that's all I have for soft goods. If you have anything to add or think I missed something, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye friends. These videos are made for educational purposes. Hopefully you learned something or it reinforced something you may already know. Now, this is just one one way to do this and there may be other ways to do what I've explained in this video and I would love to hear about those ways in the comments. Just remember to be kind as you share your own experiences and expertise on the subject. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe and hit that little bell button to be notified of the next video.